Uh, OK, interesting times at Barcelona Football Club. Let's go over to uh, Napoli, to Naples, uh, where Guillaume is there for us this evening. Obviously, we've seen, you know, the, the Xavi press conference. There's been a lot of media attention around why he's leaving the club. What there doesn't seem to be is a huge amount of conjecture about where is he, who is going to come in next and who's going to take that role from him next season. Do you have any thoughts or any insight on that? Well, if they hear what Xavi has to say, that the job is cruel and it's unpleasant, Xavi certainly has had enough, prefers to go home. I'm not sure there's going to be many candidates, but we are talking about a club that hasn't got a clear idea where to go next. Names that have been mentioned, discussed, analysed, and they've had reports on Tuchel, surprisingly enough, Hansi Flick, Roberto De Zerbi, and then there is another list, the impossible list, Xavi Alonso, Klopp, forget those, that's not going to happen, Mikel Arteta either. So, they are looking for something that's modern, different, football played at a different pace, perhaps with more success in Europe, the Hansi Flick, the Tuchel uh, way, or a better version of what they're doing, the Roberto De Zerbi way. But nothing has been decided yet, and meanwhile, they're sticking with Xavi for how long, we don't know, probably until the end of the season. But let's see what happens in this fixture against Napoli. I mean, domestic form doesn't mean everything in the Champions League, right, in this kind of knockout format. Do you, do you look at this team and think that they could go far in the Champions League all the same? Not really. Uh, this is a team that was the best defence in Europe last season and, say, in La Liga, they considered 35 goals in 24 games. Mm -hmm. They've been focusing today, by the way, this week, about defending crosses about not to be taken uh, badly organized in counter-attacks, basic stuff that should be there. But it feels like this team and the individuals are getting worse this season compared to last season. That's coaching. That's coaching that hasn't allowed Barcelona to keep winning. Plus, financially, that means Barcelona will have every season a worse squad until they sort their finances, and that will take a long time. So, no, I don't think they're going to go far. OK. All right. Interesting, Guillaume. Thank you very much. Oh. Good to see you. What? Coaching, he said. Yes. A, a bit, a, a bit of a, a dig, that, isn't it? I mean... At Xavi? Well, I, I, I don't want to put, you know, words in his mouth, but... Well, Xavi's to, say, to, say co <laughs> to say coaching and a team that's, you know, had their problems, but they still won the league under Xavi, so I thought it was a little bit harsh, that. Well, I mean, I guess like Thierry said in, was it the previous segment on the segment before, it's often the coach that takes the brunt of, mm -hmm. of that when a team declines, right? Unfortunately, yes. If you look at the history of Barcelona, I only played there for three years, so some, some people are more equipped maybe to talk uh, than me. But there was an after Rijkaard where the, the team struggled a bit. There was an after Pep. And Xavi came and won the league. We've, uh, we all remember here how he arrived in that team before Lewandowski arrived. He had a lot of youngsters, trouble outside of the field, who was going to be the president, who could they buy, maybe they were going to be banned or not. People forget how Xavi arrived in that team. He didn't arrive in that team the way Pep arrived when we were there, with guys with almost 60 to 7 caps in, in all different countries. He didn't arrive with that. Uh, uh, Pedri, uh, uh, Gavi, and we, you can go through the squad. Yes, after Lewandowski arrived. So I would say, well done, big man, because winning the league, and I know how it is there, in Again, what he had to deal... We've got to remember, it wasn't a poor Real Madrid, was it? I mean, Real Madrid is the European that's champions. What, that's what I'm saying. He, he, exactly, and he won the league into that trouble. Yes, at times at Barcelona, it's very difficult to maintain and st sustain that because, because of what you, we've seen and we heard. But for a legend of the club, now the second one that leaves the club, Pep and Xavi, because of maybe the pressure and you fit like a sabbatical year when you have a team like that and you coach Messi and you're in your, in your boyhood club, I'm talking, talking about Pep, and now Xavi, that has been a coolie since coolie, uh, uh, yes. a Barca fan, no, I'm just a Barca fan. So, You've been there, you won there, you won as a coach. And for you to just go like, hey, hey it's too much. It's too much. It, it, it is not easy. Like, again, understand me well, and I, uh, <laughs> I love, <laughs> no, because they love when I say that, that's why. <laughs> I, I enjoyed my time at Barcelona. I cannot say I didn't enjoy it. But when things are not going well in Barcelona, you need to be really, really strong to be able to hold on to the pressure, I'm telling you.